It's crazy to think that only 20 years ago you would have to do some traveling around the country if you wanted to ride a hypercoaster. Now it seems like even smaller parks are building hypercoasters these days. To those who don't know, a hypercoaster is any roller coaster that's over 200 feet. For the sake of this list, I limited my selection of roller coasters to the more traditional definition of a hypercoaster. So in other words, I didn't include rides like dive coasters, inverted coasters, or launching coasters. Just your typical airtime based rides. Alright, well let's get to the list. Before I give you my top 10, I wanted to give a shout out to Steel Eel, located at SeaWorld San Antonio. It's technically not a hypercoaster, as it only stands 150 feet tall, but it acts and looks like any other hypercoaster out there. It's a great roller coaster that features many moments of fantastic floater airtime. This roller coaster is highly unrated, and it should be added to your bucket list, if you haven't done already. Pick the back seat to experience the best airtime this ride has to offer. Number 10, Goliath at Six Flags Magic Mountain. If you're looking for airtime, I wouldn't be looking at Goliath. This giant roller coaster is the tallest coaster on the list today, standing 235 feet. It also features an impressive 255 foot drop. But let's be real here. The drop isn't that impressive because it's just not that steep. The ride focuses more on strong, positive Gs with some good laterals mixed in. This ride is pretty intense, especially during that last helix. I actually grayed out during that final helix, so you know it's pretty intense. I don't have a favorite place to sit on this ride. I'd say sit up closer to the front. Number 9, Steel Force at Dorney Park. If we were to travel back in time to 1997, Steel Force would be one of the big hitters in the country. Now it's just another hypercoaster amongst a sea of hypercoasters. With that said, this ride still stands on its own. Steel Force is your basic out and back coaster, just airtime hill after another. The ride doesn't deliver many strong moments of airtime, but it makes it up with an impressive view of the park. The ride travels the entire length of the park. Steel Force feels like it interacts with the entire park. It's basically the backdrop to Dorney Park. If you'd never been to Dorney Park, what a better way to get a layout of the whole park than by flying 75 miles an hour over everything. I recommend sitting up in the front. Some of the airtime hills near the end of the ride start to lose momentum, so the front row will experience that push up over the hill, giving a little bounce of air. Number 8, Nitro at Six Flags Great Adventure. This summer, I'll be heading back to Six Flags Great Adventure, so I'm pretty excited to give this hypercoaster another go. The ride, as I remember, has a nice blend of fun airtime moments mixed in with a couple strong moments of positive Gs. The helix is a notable point of strong Gs. I gray out almost every time during that moment of the ride. Nitro is also one of the original hypers by B&M, so I think they were still figuring things out, you could say. The layout is another basic out and back, but with a couple modifications thrown in. The ride could deliver better airtime, which I think it currently lacks, as it could be so much better than it currently is. Like many hypers, the back row is going to be your best seat. Number 7, Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point. I have mixed feelings about Magnum. The ride has a lot of fun airtime moments, but it's also pretty rough depending on where you sit, of course. This is the original Hyper Coaster. This year, Magnum celebrates its 30th anniversary. Roller coasters have come a long way since then, but Magnum still manages to keep up with the pack. The views from the top of the lift hill are incredible. One of my fondest memories riding this roller coaster was near closing time, and there was a storm a ways out over the lake, and you could see the lightning and everything. It was just so cool. Magnum suffers from a lot of trim breaks, mostly to reduce the wear and tear on the coaster trains, but also changes your overall experience with every ride. Trim brakes are a little bit low, you're going to get a better, faster experience, but when they're really kicking, the ride kind of lags, especially near the end. Sometimes I get a really bad run on Magnum, and other times it's great. So if the trim brakes are hitting hard, make sure to give this coaster another go so that you get the full experience. Also, I recommend sitting in the middle row of any car. They will deliver a smoother ride experience. 
Number six, Rite of Steel, Six Flags, Darien Lake. This is my first ever hyper coaster, so it has a special place in my heart. It was also called Six Flags, Rite of Steel at that time, but anyways, the ride has a few great moments of airtime, but Rite of Steel is mostly about the speed. This hyper has a few puzzling moments of straight track, making you wonder why not throw in a little airtime hill or something, but regardless, Every other moment makes this one one of the better hypers out there. The back seat is the place to be on Ride of Steel. That first drop really sends you flying out of your seat. The three bunny hills near the end of the ride also are great moments of fun airtime. Number five, Diamond Back at King's Island. Now that we're down to my top five, it's a little tough to rank them because they're all so good. Diamondback has a lot of great sustained floater airtime. The ride feels massive, like especially how you're towering over the whole forest area below. The splashdown at the end isn't anything exciting to experience, but a blast to watch as you're walking around the lagoon. Diamondback features the staggered seating, which I'm really not a fan of. It does make you feel more exposed, especially if you're sitting in an outer seat, but I don't really think it enhances the whole experience that much. The back row is the best for that first drop, but I would actually argue that sitting closer to the front is better for the rest of the ride. Number 4, Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. My home park. I've been on Phantom's Revenge many times and it doesn't get old. Phantom's Revenge has a lot of great moments, starting with the first drop right up to the moment that you're back on the brake run. I have a smile on my face the entire time. Phantom has a couple great moments of ejector air, which is all located near the end of the ride. The big drop of the ride has some good floater air, but the view looking straight down the mountain is just breathtaking. Even the ride's first twisting drop is fun. It's not flying you out of your seat, but it delivers like a unique sensation that starts things off on the right foot. Back row is the best place to ride on Phantom's Revenge. If you only have time to ride this coaster once, pick the back. Number three, Apollo's Chariots at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. When I first rode Apollo's Chariot, I wasn't a fan. Now I love this ride. It's loaded with airtime. It's almost relentless with the airtime. Apollo's Chariot has some of the best sustained floater airtime out there. The ride is beautifully placed alongside their lake. Being B&M's first hyper coaster, I am impressed how well this ride still holds up. You might experience a slight rattle, but for the most part, it's a smooth, fun ride. Every hill has airtime. It even manages to throw in a couple surprises here and there. So, where to sit on Apollo's chair? Yeah, pick the back row again. It's the best seat in the house. Number 2, Sky Rush at Hershey Park. Featuring the fastest lift hill of any coaster on this list. I mean, it takes like 10 seconds to reach the top of the hill. Sky Rush is one of the most intense coasters out there. The ejector airtime on this thing is ridiculous. I'd even argue that the intensity of airtime you experience will be stronger than any RMC coaster out there. Sky Rush also has some strong positive G's. The ride is relentless. Once you leave the station, it's pedal to the floor beginning to end. Of course, we gotta talk about the lousy restraints. Sky Rush, which is dubbed Thigh Crush, can leave you pretty uncomfortable near the end of the ride, but if you look past that, you will have a blast on Sky Rush. Oh, and I recommend sitting in the back, that's where all the magic is. Number 1, Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. Is there really a better coaster than Steel Vengeance? This massive coaster is the first to break the 200 foot mark of a hybrid coaster. I'm sure some of you might be upset that I'm including Steel Vengeance on this list, but I'd have to disagree. This is a hyper coaster. Sure, it doesn't look like your typical hyper, but the ride's main focus is airtime, which is what most traditional hypers are all about. Yes, it does include a few inversions, but in my eyes, that doesn't stop it from being a hyper coaster. Just go watch my Coaster Rant video where I talk about hyper coasters, see if that changes your mind. But anyway, Steel Vengeance is a fantastic ride from beginning to end. Most coasters start to lose their vigor towards the end, but not Steel Vengeance. I would even argue that the second half is better than the first. The back row is once again king for Steel Vengeance. Not sure if you're seeing the trend here, but when you're gonna ride a hyper, I'd go to the back row. It's gonna be the better pick majority of the time.
Well, that's my top 10 hyper coaster list. I'm sure I skipped out on some of your favorites, but this list is only based off of the ones that I've been on. Let me know what your favorite hypers are in the comments below. As always, please subscribe and stay tuned for more great content coming your way by X Scream Thrills.